Cancer, sun, moon, and rising sign. Get ready for July 2023. You're going to have a good financial glow up. It's going to really be sweet for your pocketbook. And you're really going to have an opportunity to travel later in the month. It would be a very important trip for you to bring a great deal of satisfaction to your life. We're going to talk about all of that as it plays out in your sky during the month of July. But before we do, if you are new to my channel, I am Lori Lothian. I'm a Western Tropical Zodiac Astrologer. I am using the whole sign house system. I practice more traditional or Hellenistic astrology. If you are new to my channel and you've listened to this video and come to the end and you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button and help me grow. Hit the notifications bell because then you know when I post one of my 30 videos per month and you'll get you know content uh, notified right away. And I have a big promotion going on and it doesn't end until August the first, but it starts on June 21st, and it's my yearly giveaway. I'm giving away 12 All Signs videos. They're each 60 minutes long. It's predictions for each sign. You can listen for Sun, Moon, and Rising for the entire year of 23, but because we're halfway through the year, I start to give this away as a, as a ethical bribe to get you to come into my Cosmic Moonshine newsletter and experience my weekly forecast content in your inbox, plus some perks you get by signing up, like discount codes for readings with me. So check out my Cosmic Moonshine newsletter in the description box below. As soon as you sign up, in your inbox, I'm arriving immediately, will be access to those 12 videos. If after a time you don't like the newsletter, you can just say sayonara, no hard feelings. So let's get talking about this sky for you in the month of July, Cancer, Sun, Moon, but also most accurate, most of the time, rising sign. So in your sky, what I was talking about in the intro was this lovely, lovely, lovely financial glow up that has to do with a Venus transit through your money house. So I'm not going to get to that quite just yet because I'm starting every video with this story of the Pluto square, the nodes we haven't seen since 1751. And in your sky, the North Node on the 18th of July moves into your 10th house of career and reputation in Aries and the South Node into your fourth house of home and real estate. Meaning, by the way, over the next two years, many of you cancers are going to move or change homes or sell a home or whatever, relocate a home. But before that happens, you know, this is the beginning of a journey of the South Node north node axis of eclipse cycles moving through your fourth and tenth house and it and in the month of july starting on the 18th of july through to the end of august you feel this pluto square tension as pluto retrogrades at 29 degrees of capricorn he's almost stationary he's moving so slow and you feel this gritty tension with your significant beloveds like your marriage partner your significant monogamous committed love partner and or and or your business partner and maybe clients or audience or you know, all those types of folks, but this would be like a power person. This would be like, yeah, one of my clients is, you know, Bill Gates or something. So in general, Pluto's been tr- transforming your marriage house since 2008 and business partnership house. And now this is a really intense energy as he finishes up this story of your seventh house. And you'll complete it fully by next fall of 24. So this tension here, though, is the first time the nodes have been squared in your lifetime and the last in this particular way, this direct, direct way. And so you might feel this kind of energy of intensity between home life, private life, career and work life and a significant person in your life and likely a marriage partner, but potentially a powerful client or audience person also impacting you between July the 18th and the end of August. So get your, you know, self attuned to what that might be about as it begins to unfold. Now, what I want to do in the chronology of the day, and I, I, I normally don't do the full moon, new moons at all, but because you have a new moon, I will include your July 17th new moon because it's a new beginning for you. Uh, but I have longer videos every month on that. So you just watch my channel, subscribe, and you can get in-depth, really asteroid detailed, fixed Sabian symbol stars and stuff included, fixed stars about each of these lunations every month. So at the beginning of the month, Mercury meets with the sun. They join together at nine degrees of Cancer called a Kazemi. It's a magical, enchanted, positive mini-grand trine that this Kazemi 
forms from your first house of identity. Yeah, it's all about you. You have the Mercury. You are the mind, the ideas, the downloads, the insights, and the communicator wizard. And on the Kazemi of July 1st, you have insights and downloads about what you need to write, say, or speak, or communicate to the world. And some of those downloads could take up to two weeks to come to fullness. That said, there is from Mercury and the Sun a trine to Saturn. And Saturn is in Pisces at this time in your ninth house of God, truth, wisdom, education. Some of you may be looking, eyeballing some longer term educational outcomes, wanting to go back to school to learn something more deeply or looking at stories to do with book publishing and wanting to find a traditional publisher or looking at stories to do with third marriages and fortifying that marriage or looking at stories to do with court and legal matters and wanting or foreign lands and foreign shores and wanting things to stabilize and be very positive in that area of your life. And that's going to be an activation around July 1st at the same time. You also have a sextile from that Kazemi to Jupiter and that Jupiter in the 11th house of windfalls, pennies from heaven, wishes and dreams coming true, long range plans and goals, friendships and groups of belonging and great career gain financially and in reputation, like gain, greater gains of your career. All of that becomes lit up on July 1st and 2nd. The Kazemi itself is magical and enchanted. You can harness it by tuning into yourself and looking for new ideas for how you can bring greater gains to your career, how you can stabilize your book publishing world. But honestly, it can even look like a favor from a friend to get an agent or a publisher, a favor from a person in power and, of, in, and influence Jupiter in your larger so social networks that benefits you in an educational or um, travel way. Okay. And you might have some kind of luscious glow up from a sibling, especially an elder sibling around July 1st and 2nd that benefits you in a lot of ways. Usually an email or phone call, but you may call them Mercury. The guy with the phone in his hand is in the house of you. Moving forward, Venus will square Uranus and Venus squaring Uranus is a sudden unexpected surprises around maybe love and money as a general principle, but this is a money house. So it's definitely about money. Venus is in the house of your money and your earnings and your possessions. And she squares Uranus shock, shock in the house of the elder sibling, she squares Uranus in the house of friends and allies uh, who want to help you, she squares Uranus in the house of great gains from your career, hopes, dreams, and wishes. So kind of bolt of money surprises coming through because the 11th house brings money as well. So a money surprise, maybe even a windfall could show up, especially if it involves elder sibling or a friend or ally. And that looks like something that could happen on July the 2nd, 3rd. Then there's follow through on August 9th, give or take a few days, and a last touch point on September 29th. You're looking at a sustained kind of breaking outside the box energy here. Um, with Venus in a perpetual square to Uranus. Did I say this already? <laughs> Sorry, you know, I've been doing a lot of videos. I was talking about the Kazemi, but then on July 2nd, 3rd, Venus also squares Uranus. So money and love surprise, basically. But you still have that Kazemi energy playing out in the sky. So all of these things are kind of blended. Um, certainly it can be some kind of uptick, like a raise, a promotion that you're not expecting. And it may take a time to unfold like July 2nd, August 9th, and September 29th. Venus going through your second house, by the way, is, is all, it goes through, she goes through there every year, but she doesn't spend four months there, but once every eight years. So the last time Venus spent four months in your second house of earnings and possessions and resources and resourcefulness, the last time that happened was in uh, June through October of 2015. So in very many ways, this is a time to capitalize on a very rare opportunity to really revolutionize the way your earnings and money story goes to, towards a greater prosperity. And last time this happened, you didn't have any action from Uranus in the house of good spirit bringing lucky breaks financially. So this is going to be a lovely time for you. Then when we move forward to July 7th to the 10th, we experience a short but sweet moment of time where Mercury comes into a sextile to Uranus from Cancer. This is going to look like maybe some opportunity from an elder sibling, friend or ally, <clears throat> And you're making the moves, you're making the messages happen to make that contact point happen in order to increase some gains in your life or to even just be more sociable with a friend or an ally in some powerful way. But there's, there's a surprise, like surprise, 
you know, a surprise party or a surprise, we're getting together or surprise this <laughs> July 7th to the 10th. There's an opposition from Mercury to Cap Pluto at the same time. Mercury um, might say something like, whew, there's a conflict with your significant other spouse, business partner, or client, and you're breaking the tension in a delightful way through friends, allies, social activities, and renegotiation of um, great gains from your career. But the tension keeps happening with somebody in your life that looks like a significant other. So look to mitigate that because you don't want to have a verbal blowout, which can happen around July 7th and 10th with your primary partner. So be careful. It doesn't last for a long time. That tension is really closer to July 10th and 11th, but it can happen. Give me a drink, guys. I'm losing my voice. Okay. Mercury on July the 11th to the 29th will move into the sign of Leo and he'll be in your money house with Venus. Good for contracts, negotiations, asks and verbal discussions around money. And good for marketing, merchandising, and selling. Good for buying a new possession you really want or selling something that you don't want and succeeding at getting the price you do want. Really good time as well for anything to do with cosmetic work to do with your face or your teeth. Really good time as well for Mercury to help you make a bargain with somebody for financial goodness, to negotiate financial deals in any which way you like and to market, sell in and promote something that you wish to sell into the world. And that's July 11th through the 29th. Your power of speech is extremely eloquent and you're able to speak in ways that get you exactly what you want. And then you're going to find that Mars also is moving into a new sign on July the 10th. Mars will move into the sign of Virgo. And Virgo is your third house of trips and travel. Shorter distance is usually domestic. It can also be about learning something, a new skill. And also it's your online world. And it's also a house of siblings particularly a younger one, but siblings in general. And having this transit of Mars here indicates sometime between July the 10th and six weeks, you're likely to take a trip. Most often this is what this means. You could also have an argument with a sibling. This is a house of siblings in general, but also the house of younger sibling. So July 10th, through to the kind of like near the end of August, there's a potential for travel or a sibling is traveling to see you. That's another way that can look. You may make some elimination changes and uh, paring down about things you're doing in your daily habits and routines. You might exercise more. You might also um, move away from or end or complete something, sever some kind of online direction that you are following, especially when it comes to websites and online social media platforms. Or you may be driven, passionate, and enthused to promote and go in a new direction with online social media and websites as well, and putting a lot of passion, focus, and willpower into something in that part of your sky. Mars bumps into a little bit of a, um, a frustration parking brake gas pedal zone on July 18th to the 22nd to do with all of this ambition in your third house of the siblings and travel and website stuff and online pa media as he comes into opposition with Saturn in the ninth house of patriarchal figures and governments. Well, that could be governments like visas and it could be also passport passport agencies. It can also be a uh, frustration with Saturn in the ninth house of, of third marriage partners or the Saturn giving you some frustration in the house of foreign lands, you know. So, you know, there's just this tension in the sky at that time. Saturn could be also about something you're trying to get into, like learning something and studying with a teacher or beginning a new educational direction. And there's there's just this wild tension for a while there, 18th to the 22nd, between Mars who wants to ambitiously say, take a trip, and Saturn who goes, wait a minute, you don't have the right visa or something like that, or the planes are all grounded and now you have to wait until the pilot strike is over, like something like that on July 18th to the 22nd. On July, oh, and then Venus will retrograde in Leo on July 22nd. Now, June, July, August, September, into October 9th, Venus is in your money house. It's a glow up. But she does retrograde on July 22nd, and you're going to go back. You might go back and, uh, you know, renegotiate something. You might sell something that you've had for a long time. Something that you wish to possess may come to you from the past. Uh, someone return something that they borrowed. Um, you may go back over a new, an old diet style and re-engage in an old way of eating. 
because that's just a house of food in your mouth. And that's going to be food that brings you pleasure. And you've been missing it. Like, I knew I shouldn't have quit the meat. I'm going to go back and eat my meat or something like that. And that's going to be happening July 22nd to September the 4th. Or going back to see the dentist to get some finishing done on some dental work that's beautifying your mouth that you had started or your lips or your injections or your Botox. I haven't had any of that yet, guys. I definitely feel like I need it, though. <laughs> it's, this is a good filter on the camera. Um, and um, so that's good for cosmetics as well. But Venus retrograde, I wouldn't start something new. Don't go and like for the first time, get your veneers. Only if you're fixing something you've already had done July 22nd to September the 4th or doing it again, you know. Um, there is a Cancer full moon and that's, I mean, new moon. And it's a new beginning uh, on July 17th at 24 Cancer. Certainly Cancer rising sun and moon between 20 and 29. Cancer feel it quite intensely. A new beginning for you guys. You're going to start something new. It's going to take you six months to complete. Look for any planets, therefore, sitting around the 24th degree of Aries, Capricorn, and Libra in your chart. Those are the 10th, 7th, and 4th houses, which mean these projects and new beginnings can be about those places in your life, career, marriage and home life but this new moon is giving you a new reset button starting on july 17th add two weeks to see some of it but actually six months for the whole thing to fall unfold its wings before your very eyes um and of course for you the moon's in dignity because the moon loves to be in cancer and that's its happy home then we also could talk about the end of the month, July 22nd to the 25th. That's where Mercury will square Uranus. This is unexpected news or information that comes through suddenly and surprises or shocks you. And yet there is a happy ending. That's because it all, it all becomes okay around the 27th of July. So July 22 to 25, there's Mercury moving his little bum through um, your house of earnings and possessions, money and resources, values and valuables. And he's going through there and along comes this point at which he, on July 22 to 25, as Venus is retrograding, he squares Uranus in your 11th house. Elder sibling, friend or ally, something to do with financial gain from your career, something to do with a, a hope, plan or wish in your life disruption disruption there <clears throat> july 22nd to 25 and it may come through phone calls emails etc which is mercury quite capable of delivering and then on july the 27th a smoothing out a smoothing out a, a negotiating a deal of fixing the problem or something like that at 28 leo that's where that conjunction happens of venus and mercury to at that point everything seems to work out well or things begin to be look okay after all <laughs> but so if you get a jolt on the 22 to 25th uh, and then expect some resolution by the 27th, 28th. Okay, thanks for listening. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to my channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Get my Cosmic Moonshine download. Check my Patreon community. Check my description box for my classes. Check everything I'm doing. Readings were opening up on a wait list for the fall. Unfortunately, I'm full right now, but I'm opening up limited spots this fall. If you want to get in for something to see me for a reading, that's your chance. If you're not on the wait list, you're probably not going to get in because unfortunately, between my old class, clients and my new clients. Um, if I just kept the calendar open, I'm always already booking into next year. So it's uh, a chance to see me if you're on the wait list. Otherwise, you probably won't <laughs> have that chance. Thanks for listening, everyone. Take care and have a wonderful July.